Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. Welcome to part two of the 60s Admiral PK1369. So you can see I've removed the chassis from the cabinet, which is very easy. There's one retainer screw that kind of keeps the chassis in its track, and one screw for the tuner here. And then undo the ground strap, the HV, and the yoke, and it all comes out as one piece. So that's kind of nice. And so the main things I want to focus on, uh, really, are the sweep sections to see if we can figure out what's going on with the yoke. We've got these two capacitors here that are uh, part of the yoke circuit, which may be defective. Uh, we definitely have to redo all of the tube sockets because just flipping this thing up and looking at the bottom shed some light on it here, and you can definitely see that there is a disgusting amount of bad solders on the tube sockets. The horizontal, the vertical sound, pretty much everything on this board could use uh, resoldering. So probably the best way to pursue this is uh, I would use a soldering gun just because it's a little bit better. In fact if I wiggle the horizontal output tube, it's hard to see on camera, but there's these couple of connections here which are coming loose. So I'm going to remove those and resolder uh, and then we'll work on tracing the yoke connections out and seeing what additionals in circuit with the yoke so that we can maybe uh, change a couple of components to affect the trapezoidal thing. I can't find my ringer right now otherwise I'd ring the yoke and see if it's good or bad. I'm betting it's got a shorter turn but we just don't know at this point. So let me go ahead and resolder these tube sockets and uh, then I think what we'll do after that is uh, look in the sweep circuits and change a couple of these capacitors. Not a bad idea while we're in here. It's easy to get apart though, that's nice. So let me get to it and maybe clean this up a little bit. Okay, so I've got the board resoldered. Uh, all the crucial connections that I could find that were touchy all the tube sockets. Uh, I also replaced two capacitors up top, one of which was in a uh, horizontal output and then the other one that is doubled up next to, that was a .028 at 1000 volts, it's probably our B-boost capacitor. So I put a .047 and .1 in series at 630 volts, so that came out to about .03 at 1200 volts, so that should be good enough. I think I am going to change the filter on this uh, just because I plan on using it. It's old, 50 year old part. So uh, I'll do that and then uh, I'll show you how I got them all in there. It looks, I think there's a total of three filters. So uh, if we look at the filter can, except that the horizontal oscillator tubes in the way. We've got a 250 at 165, we have a 200 at 150 and a 150 at 150. So I think I can get away with three 220s at 160 volts. That should be all I need there. This thing operates on, without a doubler circuit so it's fairly all low voltage. Okay so on second thought uh, I'm going to leave the can in there for now. A couple of reasons. Number one, uh, the space is limited, and the caps that I have, 220 at 160 volts, are too damn big. Uh, so I need to find another source for those or another way to mount them. Secondly, um, this test beautiful. I pulled it out and I put it on a leakage tester, I put it on the ESR tester, and it's just like excellent. Uh, didn't start to get leaky until above 210 volts, so I'm just going to leave it in there. It's working great. Uh, I got everything else back in and soldered up. I think I'll clean the tuner a little bit and then uh, maybe check some mission critical tuner tubes and stuff like that. But I think ultimately I'm going to pop it back together and then we're going to light it up again and see if its behavior is any different than previously. Alright, so here it is all back together. I cleaned up the interior of the cabinet a little bit, 
and reattach the uh, CRT sticker which is falling off, albeit the glue has not dried yet. Uh, I replaced the across the line cap. I pulled and tested a couple of these caps in the vertical. This .01 was way off so I changed that. Uh, tested all the tubes. The tuner tubes and the video amplifier are a little weak so I don't expect to get a stellar picture out of this thing. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, plug it in, see how it runs, and then uh, maybe do some geometry setups and then see if it will uh, produce a halfway decent picture. So uh, let me get the appropriate cords and things and let's get it running. Alright, it's the moment of truth. Let's give it a go. Lighten up. It's a good sign. All right. Fine tuning sucks. All right, let's see if we can level the picture out a little bit. I know it's going to have that trapezoidal problem, but we can at least level it out. That looks okay. Let's see if I can get a... Uh... Let me adjust the vertical linearity. And let's bump up the height a little bit. The pot's pretty freaking touchy. I'm trying to juggle all of this while I juggle the camera, so I apologize if it's uh, not as great as it could be. That tube socket's really touchy. Ugh. This thing's like super twitchy. So the geometry, other than the fact that there's a trapezoid thing, probably because the yoke's trash, it actually looks okay. Let's see if my UHF picks up anything around here. I don't think it will. Sometimes you can get the old analog police scanners this way, but not today. All right, let's hook a converter box up to it and see what we get as far as an actual picture picture. Okay, let's see if we can get anything out of the converter box. Actually, it's a pretty good picture. I mean, we got a little bit of shift, and it's still kind of twitchy. But otherwise, the picture's okay on that. It's got the infamous detector buzz. And I can see a little bit of a trace bar up top. Hang on just a second. Alright, so I adjusted the centering magnets a little bit. Okay, let's go to something a little more entertaining. 
Since when did Sabrina become on Antenna TV? Um, Halloween, I get it. I noticed that the width on this is pretty wide. I mean, it's lots of overscan. Like, I can't even see the, uh... Of course, that could be because it's off-center, too. Let's get it centered a little bit better. Sorry about this, guys. I'm, like I said, don't have my tripod today. I'm trying to juggle this all together. So let me do it from the other side so you can see it a little better. Okay. Well, I can see the sides a little better now. God, how many channel 10s do we have? Well, it looks like it's more centered now. You definitely can't see the edges though. Lots of overscan. I could probably change that by adjusting the screen resistor on the 33GY7. Let's see if I can let me grab my remote here. Yeah, when you squeeze it, you definitely see the trapezoid problem. But it's more or less centered. But it's definitely time for a new yoke. We'll do cropped. I mean, if you fill the screen, you can't really tell all that much unless there's uh, geometric patterns that represent or that show up. Uh, but actually, other than that, it's got a pretty good picture on it. I think I might see if I can find a replacement yoke for this thing. Because other than that, it's looking okay. I'm actually kind of impressed that it um, turned out as good as it did. So I think the next step will be trying to locate a, uh, a yoke for it. And then uh, if I get a yoke for it, then I'll swap that and we'll set it back up again. It should look pretty good. But for now, it's running. It has a pretty good picture on it. It's got the inner carrier buzz like many of these get. But otherwise, it runs. So it may be that when I get a replacement yoke, I'll also go back in and change the filters out. But this filter can test excellent, so I'm, I don't know. Anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Um, more stuff to come soon.